As we've looked at in previous videos, a typical NGS workflow looks like this. You take your DNA sample, chop it up into small fragments called inserts, add adapters to the end of the inserts, and then this library of inserts is ready to load onto a sequencer. In this video, we look at different methods for generating the inserts. There are three main methods to consider. PCR is the most targeted and precise way to create inserts. Primers bind to the targets of interest and then a polymerase creates amplicons of the exact size required for a perfect library. This method amplifies the target too, which has the advantage of increasing the sensitivity of your test. So it allows you to work with samples at a lower concentration or poorer quality DNA. Typically, you will have many hundreds of PCR primer pairs in a reaction. So you have to be careful that the primers all work with similar efficiency to avoid any bias. PCR-based methods are best for targeted sequencing of a smaller number of genes, typically less than, say, 150. PCR-based targeted sequencing is USIC's particular area of expertise. Alternatively, you can break up DNA in a random manner with a mechanical method. This could be mechanically shearing of the DNA or using something like a sonicator to fragment the DNA. The third key method is to use an enzymatic approach, so enzymes can be used to randomly fragment your sample. Both mechanical and enzymatic methods then require repair of the fragmented ends of your DNA, which adds time and complexity. But both of these methods are best for when you want to target large numbers of genes or if performing whole exome or whole genome sequencing. With both of these methods, it is then common to use oligonucleotide probes to pull out the fragments of interest. These are often attached to a bait molecule, for example biotin, that can be pulled out of solution with, for example, streptavidin coated beads. So in summary, random fragmentation methods, followed by the use of probes, is best for sequencing large numbers of genes, or whole exomes or whole genomes. The protocols tend to be long, complex and can be expensive. Whereas PCR-based methods are best for targeted sequencing. They're simpler, faster and more cost-effective.